Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about user input service. So it's used for handling user input. And user input can be anything. It could be when you press a key on the keyboard, when you click your mouse, when you touch the screen on your mobile device, or when you press a key on your Xbox gamepad. That is input. Now, because input happens on your computer, it's your computer is what your keyboard, mouse, uh, controller are plugged into, it can, we can only detect this input on our computers on the client. We can't detect when you've pressed a key on the server using server scripts, which is why we have to write this code in a local script and that is stored on the client. And it can be stored on the client when it's in a client service, such as the starter GUI, because it will go into the player GUI, which is on your client, or the starter pack or starter player scripts. So you can only use user input service on the client because you're getting user input. Now, there are two important events which we'll be looking at today, input began and input ended, and also uh, we'll be looking at user input type and key code. And these are enums. So an enum is short for enumeration. And it is sort of like a list where you can choose an item from a preset list. So um, in this case, the user input type, for example, will tell us what type of input we are receiving. So is it a keyboard input? Is it a mouse input? Is it a touch input? Or is it a gamepad input? Now, obviously, it's only going to be one of these four. So we'll have to choose from a list. And the list is the enum. So we'll get onto that a little bit later. But um, firstly, input began. So input began is an event. And it will fire a function when that event is triggered. So in this case, whenever any input is started, so whether you press a key on the keyboard or click the mouse or whatever, no matter what the input is, this event is going to fire a function. And the function has got two arguments, input and game processed event. Now input is all of the data to do with um, you know, what, what, what's happened. So if you've clicked the mouse, then the input is going to tell us what you've done. Or if you've pressed a key, it's going to tell us what key you've pressed. Whereas the game processed event tells us whether you've um, you've clicked a GUI. So if you've clicked the mouse, but you've also clicked a GUI, it will tell us. So sometimes, um, for example, if you're clicking a GUI, you might not want a mouse event to register. Or if you're pressing a key, um, you might not want it to go to the chat box if you have the chat box open. So that is what the game processed event is. We'll be looking a little bit more at that um, later on. But what I really want to show you is the input argument, because that is the most important. So I said that no matter what the input is, as long as there is input, um, the input began will fire. And I'll show you that right now. So if I just print out input began and I open the place, if I start, if I just clear the output here, um, I think that's a plugin. Yeah, so you can see, look, as soon as I start clicking the mouse, you can see that it's printing out input began. If I start pressing keys on the keyboard, if I start typing really quickly, you can see that's going up, that number of prints going up very rapidly because I'm pressing lots of keys. So no matter, no matter what key I'm pressing, I can also get my Xbox controller out. And if I press a key, uh, a button on there, you can see it's going up as well. So input began will fire when any type of input is registered on your computer. So what if you only want it to run some code when you press a certain key? Uh, a lot of people, they want to make things like press E to use or press E to sit down. So firstly, you have to check if you're pressing the right key. And that's where input.keycode comes in. So you can say if input.keycode and um, well, first, you might want to actually check if you have a keyboard, uh, if, if the input was from a keyboard. So you could say, um, and this is what I mean by enum, by the way. So because obviously we want to choose from a preset list of the input, so the input type, we could say if um, input dot user input type equals equals enum dot user input type. So we type in the name of the property or thing we're looking for. And then we do a dot and it will tell us all of the different uh, user input types that we can choose from. So we can only choose from this preset list. So obviously we want keyboard. So if you've pressed the keyboard, you've pressed a button on your keyboard, 
that's the user input type. Then we can print you pressed the keyboard. Okay. And if we run this code and I start clicking when it loads, click, 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 nothing's happening, nothing's being printed. Okay, if I start using my Xbox controller, I press some buttons, nothing's happening. But if I start typing, you can see it says you press the keyboard. So it's only now going to print if the input type is a keyboard. And again, you can change this to mouse button one if you only want code to run when you've pressed the left mouse button. And that will also work perfectly. Um, you could do it for mouse button two. Mouse button three, I'm not sure what that is. Maybe that's for certain um, mice that have other buttons. Um, or it might be when you click down on the mouse wheel actually. But what I want to get back to is uh, the key code. So this is for, um, I think this, this is for consoles or keyboards because the key code enum, let's have a look if we can get it, enum.keycode. Okay, so the key code enum has loads of different um, key codes. So if you've pressed any key on the keyboard, you've got all the alphabetical keys there. You've got things like um, semicolon, scroll lock, tab. Uh, you've also got thumbstick one and thumbstick two. Thumbstick one is the left thumbstick on an Xbox controller. Thumbstick two is the right one. Okay. So if you wanted to check to see if you press down a certain key, you could say if input dot key code, and you can see how user input type and key code they are properties of the input argument. So this input contains loads of data about the the input. So um, obviously. So you've got like the in user input type, which tells you what type of input it is, then the actual key that's been pressed if you're on a keyboard or, or controller. So you could say if input.keycode equals equals enum.keycode. And again, enum is just a preset list of things. And we use it just to easily choose um, something. So if I wanted the Q key to be pressed, I could say enum.keycode.q. Then print you pressed Q. And if we click play then if I start pressing the mouse nothing will happen because it's waiting for keyboard I start pressing keys again nothing happens but when we press the Q it's saying that you've pressed Q and the more times I press it the more times it's going to print so it's still firing the event each time it's just not getting past these if statements if it's the wrong input um, so you know you could print out input began but it still won't print out that you pressed Q. There we go. But if I press Q, it will. So there you go. So that's input began. And it will run whenever any input is registered on your computer. And I've also shown you the key code and user input type enums, which just allow you to um, choose a user input type, such as the keyboard, the mouse, or controller, or touch. And also, you can choose a key code easily. Now, the next thing I want to show you is input ended. So if I just um, get rid of of this and user input service dot input ended colon connect function. So input ended, this will run the code inside of it when the input stops. So when you release a key or when you release the mouse button or when you stop pressing um, the screen with your touch. So very simple. Play the game and if I click and I hold down, hold on. Yeah, you can see I click and I let go and it says input ended. So if I start typing, it's still going to register when I press the keys. Um, but it, uh, it will only register when I take my fingers off the keys. So if you press the keys 10 times, it's still going to print out 10 times, but it only prints out when you stop pressing it. So that's input ended. Now again, you can have the input and game processed event arguments for input ended, and uh, you can still print out the key code or check if they're pressing a certain, if they were pressing a certain key when it ended. So that's, you know, you can still do that on input ended. I just want to now show you about game processed event because a lot of people will be wondering what it is and what it's used for. So basically, if you click the mouse or you do any input, but your mouse is 
um, hovering over a GUI object or you were interacting with a GUI object when you when the input was happening, then it would be true. But if you weren't, then it would be false. And let me show you. So if I print out on input began, I print out the game processed event. And I've got a text button here just to show you. So um, if I click the mouse without clicking on the GUI, you can see that it is false. If I now click on the GUI, it's true. So because I'm interacting with a GUI object, the game processed event is going to be true. Now this is useful, um, as I said earlier, because you might not want your to you, you might not want to fire the code within this input began if the game processed event is true. So if you're clicking a GUI, you might not want some mouse input or um, a function that might um, do something like create an explosion if you were to click. You might not want that to happen if you click a GUI because um, you know you, you're you might be in a shop GUI and because you're having to click the GUI, you don't want those explosions to happen. So that's what a game processed event is. It will tell you if you are interacting with a UI element. And the last thing I want to talk about in this tutorial is um, keyboard enabled, touch enabled, um, gamepad enabled, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a an if statement here. So you could say if user input service dot keyboard enabled, then print you have a keyboard connected and you can do the same thing for um, mobile to see if you have um, a touch touch screen and you can also do the same for gamepad if gamepad enabled then we know that you have a, uh, a gamepad connected and you can also check if the user has a mouse connected to their device. So mouse enabled, you have a mouse connected. So now if we run the game, we will be able to see what is connected to my computer. So if we scroll up here, um, it has gone purple for some reason. Um, it says you have a keyboard connected, a gamepad connected and a mouse connected. Awesome. So it's just a way of figuring out what device somebody is on. So you could say, um, if you wanted to show certain things to a mobile player, then you can use user input service dot touch enabled, keyboard enabled, gamepad enabled, and mouse enabled to work that out. Now the user input service is also really useful for mobile. So there's a lot of events that will fire um, to do with touching the screen if you have a mobile device. So touch started will fire when you um, place your finger on the screen. So starting the touch input. But there's also lots of other events that you could check out, such as touch tap, touch pan, touch pinch, touch rotate, touch swipe, etc. So, and also touch ended, so when someone takes their finger off the screen. So these are useful when you are making your game work on mobile. So um, let's, let's try one out. Okay, so we can see it comes with three parameters, touch swipe, this this one. Um, so the swipe direction will tell us, and again, this is an enum. So um, because there are only a certain number of ways you can swipe, um, left, right, up, down, then you can only choose from these values. So that's why enums are useful. They just allow you to pick from a, a predefined list. So it will tell us the swipe direction. It will tell us the number of fingers that were involved, so whether you used two fingers or one finger, or whether it was a game processed event, so whether you um, you were interacting with the GUI element. Now this is hard to imitate, um, it's hard to swipe when you are in an emulator mode. Um, so what I've done is I've set the camera to scriptable, so it just gets locked in the same position, we can't move the camera. And you can see I've set up the event by saying user input service dot touch swipe colon connect function and I've got my three parameters which we just looked at there the swipe direction the number of touches and whether it's a game processed event and the arguments they don't need to be named the same thing it's the order that counts so it will print whether you swiped left right up or down um, or none at all and I'm using two string to convert it into a string because direction is a enum value and it's not a string to begin with so it's going to print out the direction so if we if I just try and swipe, let's clear the output, swipe down, 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 let's go up. Again, I did say it was quite, it's quite hard to do this on 
mobile, there we go, you swipe it up. It's hard to do because I'm just clicking and dragging the mouse. This would be better on an actual touch screen, um, but I can't show you that right now. Swipe left, maybe. Yeah, there we go, left and right. So right, left, up, up, down. Yeah, you can see how it works. So that is the swipe, uh, touch swipe event. And also, just one last thing, if you are working with Xbox controllers and you want them to be able to press a, a button on there, such as the A button, how do you differentiate between the A button on the keyboard and the actual A button on the Xbox? Well, it's very simple. You would just say um, button either A, B, L1, L2, L3, R1, R2, R3. Um, so anything with button before it, that is the Xbox. So we'll say... Uh, if e input.keycode is enum.keycode.button A, then print out Xbox A. And obviously you won't be able to see this, but when I press A on my Xbox controller, then it will print that out. And again, one last thing, it also works for the thumbstick. So if you do use the thumbstick on Xbox, and you start moving it around, um, or you press it down, uh, oh, it doesn't seem to work. Yeah, I know well, that wouldn't work. Uh, that will come for a future video then, because Xbox input is, um, there's a lot more to Xbox input and things like detecting the position of the thumbstick, which is fun stuff as well. So I'll leave the video there because it's uh, over 15 minutes already. But there is the user input service. That's all you need to know as a beginner. Input began, input ended, uh, user input type, uh, will tell you whether you're on a keyboard, mouse, gamepad, touchscreen, etc., or, or mobile, etc. Uh, key code as well will tell you the input type, so not the input, the the type, so the so whether you press the keyboard button or the mouse button, uh, or certain yeah, Xbox controller button. Uh, enums are just a data type, which is a set of preset values, and you can choose one of them. You've also got um, your Mobile events such as touch began, touch ended, touch swipe, which you can play play with, um, and also keyboard enabled, mouse enabled, uh, gamepad enabled is a great way of checking what device you are on. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Alvin Blocks, for more. Share it with a friend who may be interested in learning about the user input service. And I'll catch you in the next advanced scripting tutorial. Thanks for watching and have a great day.